Hey everybody, I hope y'all are doing well and um, just wanted to remind my students if you watch the videos you either uh, need to try to comment on them if you can uh, on YouTube and I'm also posting them on the K&H Tractors Facebook page for the ones of you that may have missed that notification. Um, it's in video two. I get you, video two. Um, anyways, in order to get to that, just on the home page of my YouTube channel, on the picture that's got the, the tractors up there at the top, it's, it'll have a Facebook link, and click on that, and you can go to K&H Tractors' Facebook page, and then find the videos that um, correspond with the RHS welding, and underneath them, you can comment on them just like any post on Facebook. Um, or if you want to just give them a thumbs up or whatever, that way I know that you've watched them. I can see that, that who it is and stuff on Facebook, I can tell. Um, but I appreciate you, the ones of you that's left comments and the ones of you that's been doing that. And, uh, and Lyndon, of course, he's um, keeping me entertained on his comments. But today, uh, on this lesson, we're not going to do any work. Um, I've got a few more coming up where we're going to be doing some work, and I'll try to explain um, what's going on. Uh, the one from the hay bellers yesterday, I didn't go into a whole, whole lot of detail, but um, y'all could tell what was going on, I'm sure, and wasn't any welding involved, a little bit of fabricating and stuff on the uh, the shims and stuff on that one, but the lawnmower one, um, it, was a, it was a good instructional video as well. And, this one, we're gonna go, go over some particulars about welding rods and and some of our uh, machines and settings and stuff. But, um, of course, we've went over all this stuff before. But I've got a, a 1 8 inch diameter 7018 electrode. Now, remember the 70 tells you the tensile strength of this electrode be 70,000 PSI. The one, which is the third digit in it, will tell you the uh, positions that it can be welded with. And one can be welded in all positions. That means it can be welded flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. And then the eight will be the flux type. Now, a 1 8 inch diameter electrode, how do you determine if that's 1 8 inch diameter? What you need to go by is the wire core that you'd put in your electrode holder. Um, that's where your 1 8 inch diameter comes in to. It does not take into account the thickness of the flux. Now, something important about a 7018, which I don't have the capability of doing right here. Um, at home, uh, I'd like to get me a little small oven, but they need to be kept dry. Um, so you either need to keep them in a rod oven, in a sealed container, or something to keep the moisture out of them because they'll perform a whole lot better if you can keep a 7018 dry. They're a low hydrogen electrode. Next we have, and another thing, yeah, low hydrogen. Now, 6013, the 60, you'll have 60,000 PSI, one, you can weld it in all positions. And then, of course, the three is your flux type. Now, a 6013 is a fill freeze electrode. So what that means is it, it deposits metal, uh, filler metal, similar to like a 7018 would, but it, the freeze part means it's gonna solidify a little bit quicker. So it works a little bit better in out of position welding and that sort of thing. But also you get a d good deposit rate and a little smoother bead um, than you would with another type we're gonna go over. I don't have a 6010 or 6011 or anything. Uh, got some up out in the truck, but I didn't bring them in. Uh, but a 6010, of course 60,000 PSI all positions and stuff, but they are a fast freeze electrode. So they solidify 
quicker, which yeah, they have a more distinct ripple pattern um, because the metal de is not, doesn't stay molten as long to where it flows together and makes a smoother bead. So on the 6010s, 6011s, they're used uh, in cases like overhead and vertical welding. You can use them in all positions, of course, but they excel in overhead and vertical welding where they solidify faster. And if you have like an open uh, root welds to where that you're trying to fill in a gap, pour fit up, um, they also work better on greasy and dirty materials. Now next, we have a 7014. Of course, you should know by now what all the, the digits stand for. A 7014 is a... Uh, a fast fill electrode. So they deposit in 7024 as well. Now 7024, it's got the two in it, that can only be used in flat and horizontal. But they deposit a lot more metal, um, filler metal. The downfall to those is you have to be careful or you get wormholes in them where you get a little entrapment of slag. You have a weld bead on each side and you get a little entrapment of slag um, kind of up the middle. So um, you need to use a pretty high amperage to where that it's burning good and not use a whole, whole lot of motion um, when you're running a bead with the 7014 or 7024, both. But they are, they're a good, they have a good deposition rate and a lot, again, fast to um, weld with. Okay, we have this MIG welder here and um, it's a Hobart Iron Man 230. Now I went over a little bit the other day on your on your settings on this chart. I just wanted to add a little bit to some of it. Um, of course, you have the material being welded. If you're setting a machine, that's that's the first thing you want to know. Is it is it's going to be mild steel or steel you know steel, which is mild steel? It's going to be stainless steel. This is a different type of wire down here for steel. Um, is it going to be a, a aluminum? Because this one has capability to weld aluminum with a spool gun. Then you need to know what type of wire and polarity you're going to be using. Now, okay, on your polarity, if you're going to be using solid wire, if you're using gas shielded flux core, if you're using aluminum or stainless steel, you need to have your machine set to direct current electrode positive, which is DCEP. Now, how do we determine the direct current electrode positive? There's not a knob to set this with. So, you look right here. Red is positive, black is negative. Now, what you need, if you want electrode positive, you want the red terminal hooked to your drive rolls, which is going to give you direct current electrode positive. Your ground clamp will be hooked to the negative terminal. So, when would you change that? If the only time that I, that you would change your polarity setting on a MIG welder is if you're using self-shielded flux core, the non-gas shielded flux core, then you want to use direct current electrode negative. So what you would do is switch this electrode this positive terminal over to the negative and then the negative your ground back to the positive that give you electrode negative so i think sometimes a lot of people have trouble with that when they get these machines especially the smaller ones that come set up for the self shielded flux core is they need to make sure that their settings are changed got a bird in here somewhere it sounds like um so I always Always check that out, especially if you're having if you're having difficulties. Okay, got your polarity set right. 
we've got solid wire on here right now which is ER70S-6. E stands for electrode, R stands for rod, 70 is your tensile strength, 70,000 PSI, S means solid. Now you have different gas mixtures for solid wire. Most commonly, you're gonna use 75% argon and 25% CO2 gas when welding steel. You can use 100% CO2, which doesn't give you hardly as good of a weld profile, and I don't believe you get as good a penetration with using pure CO2. Advantage to pure CO2 is it's cheaper. You have a 98% argon and 2% CO2. You have 92.8 and 90.10. Now, the 92.8 and the 90.10 you're going to use more so for spray arc. Um, I have this machine set with the 7525 and you use short circuit transfer. That's where the wire contacts the metal and it gets burned off thousands of times per second. With spray arc, you have to have at least a 90% um, argon rich mixture. Spray is used more in production welding with good clean steel where that you're going to be using um, welding depositing a lot of filler metal at one time and it and the spray is actually what it does it will spray it sprays the molten metal um, down it doesn't the wire doesn't actually contact the base metal like it would in a short circuit Now the different wire sizes we have is 0 0.024, 0 0.030, 0 0.035, and 0.045. That's for this machine. They get bigger than that. I use 0 0.035. That way you can get you can weld on thick metal, and you can weld down fairly thin and still do pretty good. If you're going to be doing a lot of thin welding, you want to go for 0 0.024 or 0 0.030. Um, but for me, the 0.035 is the best. Now, if you switch wire, you need to be you need to switch your um, contact tips, and you also need to switch your drive rolls. Um, some drive rolls have multiple sides, but they're also sized. Everything's sized according to the wire that you use. B. Take care of that. All right. We know what we're using. We know what size wire or what type of wire we're using. We're gonna be using 7525 gas. We've determined that. We're using 035 wire. Now, let's say we wanna weld on quarter inch steel. Quarter inch steel, it recommends six on the voltage and 44 on the wire speed. And like I said, this, this machine is not set up to where it actually has voltage and wire speed set, true voltage and wire speed settings. It just goes by those numbers as a reference. What I do is go ahead and set that machine at what the uh, chart recommends, and then if you want to fine tune it from that point, um, that is good. Now, sometimes you'll see something about um, amperage on a MIG welder. Amperage on a MIG welder is not necessarily a setting on most machines. Some of your higher tech digital machines will show you what amperage you're running at when you're welding. These don't. What determines your amperage is your wire feed speed. That will increase or decrease the amperage on your machine. Back to the drive roll. Let me get you adjusted here. Okay. This is your tensioner knob. You twist it down to tighten it, twist it up to loosen it. If you want to just loosen it to change your wire or your drive rolls, you just flip it back and it pops up. For solid wire, um, you can run it fairly tight, pretty good amount of tension. But for flux core, 
you want to loosen that up so it doesn't flatten your wire out and you also want to uh, adjust the drag on or adjust it by taking and pulling your trigger pushing against a piece of wood and if the drive roll spins when it contacts it then you're set pretty good um, you might have to tighten it just a little tighter than that but if you get your drive rolls too tight if they're squeezed down or too tight on this wire and your wire gets kinked or tangled in your gun not, not really won't get kinked in your gun but if it gets hung or your or gets melted into your tip and you continue to pull the trigger then this wire is going to start to push out right here and that's called bird's nest and it'll wad up down here in your drive rolls and that is considered um they call that bird's nesting and just makes a mess you have to cut all that out refeed your wire through your gun which is wasteful and want to avoid that at all costs now you twist that on this one to remove your drive rolls these hobart welders are set up a lot like a miller now you see the 0.035 on this side 0.030 on the other side what's confusing is the side that is labeled 0.035 the the groove you're using for 0.035 is actually on the opposite side of the drive roll so when you're looking at it on the machine you see 0.035 that that means you're using the 035 side even though the groove is on the opposite edge because that's where your wire the way your wire runs through the gun um i hope that makes sense you can tell right here here's your outside groove which is the 0 0.030 groove the inside groove is the 0 0.035 so if i turn that around you've got 0 0.030 which would be on the opposite side so you want both your drive rolls matching to the to the wire size slide that back up there and turn it now another setting on this style machine is the spool gun and mid gun switch um, if you're running your regular mid gun this switch needs to be down it's got an indicator if you're running a spool gun you need to switch that up and that changes your controls over to your spool gun so when you mash your trigger it activates um, the controls in the machine to send power to it and gas all right got a mid gun here here is your nozzle. This is the nozzle that directs the gas flow to your weld and protects your contact tip. This part here is your contact tip. Has to be sized according to your wire. This is your um, contact tip adapter or some people call it a gas diffuser. And what that does, these little holes here is where your gas comes out the gas hits inside of the nozzle and then it's directed out to your weld through the opening in the front anybody needs to make sure that the nozzle is open because it'll build up a spatter you need to keep it clean or you won't get proper shielding gas um, to your weld also make sure your ports on your gas diffuser or your contact tip adapter either way you want to call it is uh is clean and then that of course is what your contact tip screws into this is replaceable that's replaceable you have an o-ring up here you make sure your o-ring is good because that seals your contact tip so that the gas comes out this end and doesn't come out up here something i recommend doing which we struggle with at times is keeping your your mid gun out of the floor don't leave it laying in the floor where something can fall on it or somebody can step on it and bust the gun or the trigger because that has happened also when you lay this gun down make sure you don't lay it on to where the trigger gets activated and it starts feeding wire what 
Well, thank y'all for watching, and uh, some of the stuff we reviewed today might help you on your um, work that I sent home, some of the paperwork, so be sure to um, review your paperwork along with this video, and I believe you'll find that some of those questions on there has been answered today. But um, if you have any questions or anything to add, um, leave it in the comments or put it on the one on Facebook in the comments and I'll get back to you on it. But um, y'all have a, a good day.